What is Ajax? Hey everyone, Garth Schulte from CBT Nuggets. Want to take a micro nugget to talk about this cool technology that's been around for a little bit, but has really taken off over the past few years called Ajax. And if you're like me, the first time you heard of this Ajax technology, you probably thought of that oh so powerful cleaning agent, Ajax. And I thought, awesome, now I'm going to have this automated way to clean all the coffee cups and Pepsi cans off my desk so I can focus on coding more. But it's actually wrong. It has nothing to do with the powerful cleaning agent that is Ajax, which has also been around for a long time. But, but instead, Ajax stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. It's more of a technique than it is a technology. It sits on top of JavaScript or jQuery and uses XML HTTP requests, which allows us to send background requests to the server, and it allows us to update just portions of a web page. So in the past, anytime we needed to do an update, say data's changed, we needed to go get some new data from the server. In the past, whether we had a little tiny bit of data or a lot of data, we always ended up refreshing the entire page to display the updated content. Ajax allows us to request that data in the background, and when the response comes back to the front end, we can inject updated HTML into the DOM and only update that portion of our page. Google is actually responsible for bringing Ajax to light with Gmail. Gmail was really cool and new and everybody liked it so much because you didn't have to hit send receive. There was no send receive button. When you got an email, it just showed up in your browser. So Ajax has become wildly popular. Everybody wants to implement it now because it increases the user's experience. Now, because it's asynchronous as well, the user isn't when they click a button, they're not waiting for the response. It's not locking up the page. They can go do other things, and when that response is ready, it'll come and update just that portion of the page. Also, it takes a lot of the heat off of our web servers because we're not requesting entire page refreshes. We're only requesting the data that we need. Now, let's take a real live example so you can see Ajax in action, and then we'll take a look at it on paper to see how it all works underneath the hood. So let's fire up Chrome here, and let's go to a website. How about Zillow? Zillow's a good one. And really, any site that has some sort of searching capability on it is a good candidate for Ajax because what you can do is only update the results of the search and just that portion of the website rather than everything. And it'll make it really responsive too because while it's doing its searching, it's going to do it in the background, hence the asynchronous part, which will leave the, the rest of the web page still available for the user to, uh, to do their thing. So let's click uh, just on the main page here. Click search, and let's just type in here a city. How about uh, West Palm Beach, Florida? That sounds good. And then notice over on the right here. Now, this is all Ajax driven on the right because watch this. If we go down here and look for more results, see that? That actually took a, a request, sent it to the server to get the results for that page, but it only updated this portion. Now, watch this. Same thing here. Anytime you see this loading results, that's kind of the Ajax load uh, logo that you see everywhere. But uh, there it is. So we can come down here and, and page through all we want, and it's just updating this portion of the page. So let's see how this works under the hood. Let's take a look at this step by step and talk about all the technologies that are involved. So we're the user. We clicked on some kind of a button here or the page as we saw at the bottom of Zillow to get some new search results. Using Ajax, which is really just jQuery or JavaScript sitting on top of something called XHR, which is XML HTTP request, background request, right? We'll use Ajax, just the, the friendly term for all that stuff, <laughs> to, uh, to submit that request in the background. Optionally, we may use JSON. JSON, JavaScript object notation, is really just a lightweight data format because a lot of the times when you're working with uh, in the front end with data, it's structured. It's structured inside of objects. Objects are just digital representations of objects. So say, for instance, in here, we have a search object that contains all the search parameters and everything about the search. Well, what could happen is we would package that object, turn it into a data format that's lightweight that we can exchange with the server. The server will then do its thing, process the request, and return the results back, really, to JavaScript. This line should really look like this. It's going to pass it over here to JavaScript. So JavaScript is going to take that JSON results, turn them back into objects, and then it's just going to use those objects, turn them into HTML, and inject them into the DOM, the document object model, which is the live representation of our HTML that we can then search and work with and dynamically inject HTML to, which will then just show up to the user. So that's what it looks like. One, two, and three, all done in the background. And that's the beauty of Ajax. It's asynchronous. It all happens underneath the hood in the background. And when it comes back in, we can inject those results into the DOM 
without needing to refresh and update the entire page. In the CBT Micro Nugget, we learned what AJAX is all about. We saw that it stands for asynchronous JavaScript and XML, and it's a way that we can increase the responsiveness of our web pages by only updating the portions that need updated. So we can send background requests to the server, and when those responses come back, we can inject HTML directly into the DOM, only updating and affecting a part of our page. I hope this has been informative for you, and I would like to thank you for viewing.